Hey everybody, Holla Family Podcast. We are back. Uh, everybody, hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl. Having a great, great Monday today after the game, you know, talking trash at the water cooler like everybody else. Um, you know, congrats to the Patriots. Rough loss for the Seahawks. But uh, yeah, just want to introduce the whole gang. You got me, Finesse, back again. Yo, what's up, man? Um, we got Feast for Thought out there. What's going on, Feast? What up, what up? As a Niner fan, I'm happy to be out today. Seattle loss. So I'm I'm really proud about that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. Yo, shameless logic. Yo, how do you feel about the game, man? What's going on? Yo, what's going on, fellas? Um That was a dumb, dumb call to pass the ball at the end, but at the same time, congrats to the Patriots or whatever. But um Seahawks should have won that. They should have taken advantage of that so so badly. Marshawn should have ran it in, but that's just me. Yeah, a lot of people feel the same way, man. So um I don't know. That actually brings us to our first question. You know, we're going to talk about a couple of things, not just the Super Bowl, but of course, you know, we're going to start out with the Super Bowl. Um, so, yo, a lot of people are saying, yo, the Seahawks, or no, the Patriots didn't win that game. The Seahawks just kind of lost it. I disagree. Um, I think the Patriots definitely played their asses off, um, especially to do what they did and come back and also grab that pick takes a lot of like hard work and perseverance. But, um, I think it's just unfair. I think, like, you know, obviously, we know nobody Lie. likes the Patriots. Huh, what's up? <laughs> what I don't know. <laughs> Yo, you're kind of breaking up there, Feast. It's tough to hear you. Oh, yeah, uh, it like, it's, it's kind of sound like you said, this is a lie. <laughs> you said, what's the lie? What's the I lie? don't know, whatever you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that what they did to Obama in the middle of Congress when he was talking? <laughs> they always do that to him. <laughs> you a lie! <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yo, so like, nah, I just think, I just think the, um, the Patriots definitely played, they played really well, yo, man. Brady had two touchdowns in the last quarter, you know what I mean? And that dude, uh, Butler, they said they practiced for that play. So, I mean, I can't, how you can't knock somebody for, for getting a pick on a play that they consistently practiced and was, you know, preparing for. I don't think that's just, you know, all luck. You know, I think it was a bad call by Seattle, but yeah, whatever. Man. Yeah, it was it was a bad call, but it was just such a great play by what was Butler, right? His name Butler. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. such, that was such a great play, man. Like that's just yeah, you know, that's yeah, you know, that's clutch performances right there to read that and just know to bite that and not to be yeah, too man. uptight and don't bite on it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know that's the thing. I mean, you bite on a you bite on a route. You you know you leaving yourself naked on another on the back end. You know what I'm saying? So. That was really yeah, and on, and on a slant that was that quick, yeah. was that packed inside, it was, and he jumped yeah, he in. That so, so smart, so accurately. Like I was kind of surprised when he actually caught that. I was like, "That's crazy," because dude, dude was open. Like, what's his name? Um, Russell Wilson. He, it maybe he he threw it a little bit to the right. He wouldn't have caught it, but yo, he he had it on point. Like he saw that coming yeah. and he went right for it. Yeah, I, I think it was just a straight. It was just, he just made the play though. That was crazy. And the thing was, I didn't even know he picked it off until the announcer yelled it out, cause like it was so fast. And I was just looking. I'm like, wait, what just happened? I thought he batted it down. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, well, you know, they got third down. And also, since it was the end of the game, and you know, there was really no more going back, they would have had fourth down as well to go for it. So it's like they had two other plays. I was like, all right. And that's what I'm saying. Like that was just, that was like an unbelievable interception. So like. They were, you know, obviously, you know, they were thinking in terms of, you don't, you don't ever think about turning the ball over that close on the goal line. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, you want to be conservative and not turn the ball over, but, like, you're thinking, what's the worst? I'm like, it's going to get batted down, and then we go, we got two more downs to run it. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Because we've I seen mean, how many goal line, how many goal line stands have we seen this year where they had, you know, third, first down, third down, they still get stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on, on my end, I, I think it was a great game. They, both teams played hard, and it was a pretty close game. I thought the Seahawks were going to win, but then I saw the Patriots coming back. Um, come to think of it, I didn't, even, I didn't even see that touchdown that they had that brought them so close when it was 21-24. And then when I saw that, I was like, whoa, when did the Patriots come back? And my boy was like, they just scored a touchdown. I was like, whoa. Like, I was, I was like in shock. And then, you know, as, as usual, the Patriots always win by some kind of like three or four points. Which is always pissing me off, but you know they 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 got it that that they they got the touchdown they I think they pretty much won the game because that catch was so lucky. I didn't, um it, it yeah, would have been it would have been a tricky. Yeah yeah it wouldn't have been that close man if that wasn't for that that catch that was crazy. Exactly. Yo that um 
what you call it, yo, the the thing about the game too was that there's so many different like stories you could just go through. Like that dude who uh who never caught a pass the whole season and then he had like over a hundred receiving yards, Matthews, I think his yeah, name was. His first career catch in, in running yards, right? Yeah. That was yeah, crazy. And he had, I think he had the second most yards for an undrafted wide receiver. Ever in the Super Bowl, yeah, word. That's, That's crazy. Was, uh, and then um what you call it, on the uh on the drive where the Patriots um, needed to uh, to to, uh, to take the lead because it was before it was crazy because the, the, like the Patriots came down and scored in the fourth at like with like 12 minutes then it was a three and out and then they scored again on eight for eight passing right but it was when they got that penalty I think it was like a holding penalty or something like that and it was all, yeah it was ho- it was um holding because I know it was offensive pass interference because Amendola was blocking he was blocking the defender before Vereen caught the lob. So he started blocking him, thinking he already had the ball, but it was like, yo, you can't block before the pass is already caught. So they called him, they called it back. It was second and 18. And then all of a sudden, like, Brady steps up and launches it to Edelman, and he gets a 21-yard gain on, I think it was third down, maybe. Yo. And that about, was crazy. Yo, Edelman was mixing them up all night, yo. It was crazy. <laughs> and nobody, nobody's breaking tackles on the Seahawks like that. Like, Edelman was breaking them. Yeah. Yo, his footwork is crazy right now. <laughs> Word, yo, word, yo. Y- y'all gotta give it to Marshall, man. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, man. Yo, dude was killing oh, with, with the know. running game. Oh my oh, yeah. gosh, the whole wanna, time where I'm like, you don't want to tackle him. Nope, yeah. nobody's trying to tackle him, yo. This that dude is an old piece, yo. And he caught, and he caught passes. Like, come on, son. Like, you you cannot deny this guy has some skill on him. Oh yeah, yeah. He did catch that pass up on the sideline. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah, man, I gotta deal with that crap twice a year, bro. Like, he, <laughs> yo, and that's the thing. Like, you don't want to. You you might get a nice pop on him, but he's gonna keep coming. You gotta tackle him all game, man. That's yep. <laughs> think about that. You a grown man trying to tackle him all game. Yep, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It's gonna be interesting what happens just because the Seahawks. Um, like everybody sleeps on how Russell Wilson. Is still on that rookie contract where they really haven't had to pay him much money. Mm-hmm. So it's like you kind of you can afford to have all these guys on the team like Cam Chancellor and Richard Sherman and Earl Thomas and Marshawn Lynch and Russell Wilson. And it's like, but now you know Michael Bennett, all these guys. Like yo, now you got to pay Russell Wilson like what you owe him. Yeah, because he took like, out the Super Bowl. Word, you got yeah, your like, two yeah. back-to-back Super Bowl. Yeah, right. Like, hey, even Marcus says he's got to get like 19 mil. So. Yeah, the minimum, like minimum, like yo, he's I gonna get paid think, just like a, a I, elite quarterback. Like they're never gonna let him go. And so it's like, how are you gonna afford to keep him and keep the whole Legion of Boom, keep your defensive line, and keep Marshawn Lynch? So that's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what they do, how they're gonna manage the money, because you know they got they got lucky with those first few years. He's only making what like a hundred, two hundred thousand. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> he's basically exactly. working for the low. Yeah, it sounds like five hundred fifty stacks. Yeah, man, I, I commend him for that, man. Not not a lot of dudes would take that. No, I mean he didn't have a choice. He was a rookie, so it was his first first like yeah, NFL contract. So like, yeah, they re- yeah. structured that for like rookies. But he he yo he worked for it. Oh, of oh, course, yeah, he he knows. yeah. yeah he's gonna get paid handsomely for that. Yeah, oh, man. man. You gonna get that Jay Cutler money? <laughs> <laughs> like, he can start thinking about his his kids and his family being set. <laughs> Word, word. All right, cool, though. Um, all right, well, we don't got to spend too much time on the Super Bowl, but um, something interesting that did happen uh, at the Super Bowl that I wanted to talk about, which kind of leads us into our next topic, was uh, the homie Warren Sapp. Oh, man, Warren Sapp. What you doing, Warren? Getting that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Warren, what are you doing, yo? All right, after the game, Warren Sapp, Hall of Fame player, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, analyst on NFL Network. Um, he was arrested for soliciting a prostitute, right? And the way it went down was just so bad. Like, Warren Sapp basically is at, like, a hotel in Arizona, and, and uh, two girls that are escorts were in his room, and somehow an argument broke out about the money, like, allegedly, and it, the, the, it allegedly turned physical and spilled out into the hallway. Um... And then the cops came and like, you know, he basically said, yeah, you know, I was soliciting prostitutes, but, you know, I didn't lay hands on them. That's not true or whatever. And basically, long story short is um, NFL Network, who he works for, has suspended him indefinitely 
without pay and pending the outcome of the investigation. So um, they're gonna they, they pretty much he, he he pretty much if anything happens out of this, he lost his yeah, job. Yeah, he got fired. And he, yeah, and he's been there for for six years. You know what I mean? So it's rough. Oh, and on, terrible, oh. terrible. And on on top of that, on top of that, two weeks prior, Greg Anthony. Who used to be on ESPN doing NBA games? Now he's doing CBS college uh, basketball games. He got caught on uh, in in DC with a, a prostitute in his in his hotel room in DC. It was a sting, and um, he definitely got fired by CBS uh, for the same thing. So it's just like, damn man, like what are y'all doing out there, man? Like, oh, these retired athletes, yo, out here getting caught out there with with, with prostitutes and stuff like that. So like, I don't know, like, like. I'm sorry about that, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, like Warren Sapp, it's like how you just blow your cover because you got because <laughs> you beefing with your with your <laughs> with your girls like that. You know, I mean, it's bad enough you do prostitution and you work for NFL Network, but like if you're gonna do it, I mean, like why are you blowing your spot up? Are you in the hallway? Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. With Greg Anthony, it was a sting. With Warren Sapp, it was just lack of discretion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, right. that's just retarded, man. It's just old men bored with their lives, and they're, they're just trying to get by with whatever they can get with. I don't yeah. get it. So what's the what's so all right? So what do you guys think is the connection with like um? Because I, I mean we're, we're all grown, man. We know this is not a secret that this stuff happens. But what is the connection with like these men that have very you know high profile jobs? Um, very good paying jobs and you know just like regular use with like you know ladies of the night and hookers and whatnot like what's the connection there why does this keep like you know becoming an issue and you know some of us know about it you know situations where it's not even reported and things like that but um, like what do you guys think is the, the whole connection with that I'm not really sure I think you know some people feel that they have the money that they just afford certain luxuries and that just happens to be women and these women are willing to, you know, sell their bodies for the money, so it's easy for them. So it just coincides, and that's and that happens. So when you get caught up, you know, that's that's what usually happens, man. You can't get away with it forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it's basically just yeah, like you know, um, Shameless was saying, like it's just a luxury, you know. You don't have to invest any time or energy. You know what I'm saying? And and also, you can't just be. Uh, when you're a high profile celebrity, you can't just be messing with regular people. People go to the paper, people open the mouth. That's because don't open the mouth. You know what I'm mm. saying? It's just in house. That's why they, my, that's my why, Donald right? That's why, like, a lot of like politicians do that shit. Because it's like, yo, you can't afford to be just going to a bar and meeting some chick and you're a politician. Like, it don't work like that. You know Especially you when gotta, you got a wife at home with kids waiting on you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you pay for the con the confidentiality, so. Mm, I never thought about it that way. See, where, where my mind was going was that um, with a lot of these dudes who have these jobs, it always seems to be the ones that travel a lot, um, yeah. that are never home, on the road a lot for work. These guys are covering sports events, so they're always at like this road game, this road game, covering this event over here. So it's like. You know, you might see like one of these guys on ESPN who's always at every Monday night football game, no matter what city it's in. It's like, yo, like I'm gone like every week. So, you know, if I have, you know, I have needs and I'm going to go get them taken care of one way or the other. Oh, of course. So, you know, by, excuse me, by any means. And that's just kind of the way I was thinking about it. But when you mentioned the whole confidentiality thing, too, like that's actually, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because these guys are in high profile positions as celebrities, you know. Yeah, that makes sense too. Well, yeah, yeah of course. Bag, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, just like yeah, just like you said, finesse. People have needs, and sometimes some people can't control their needs. They don't have that strong of a will, and they just happen to be the celebrities that we know. And we see it all the time where they people do messed up stuff. They're human beings. That's how it's gonna be. Like. Like, remember Mr. C? Like, yo, man, you getting... Oh, you my getting, God, son. Yeah, you getting caught up with trannies in, 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 the, in the street? Like, come on, man. Yeah, he got his job back, though. He did? Yeah, but yeah. it wasn't the same. You know what I'm saying? Didn't he like, resign, but didn't he resign, though? Yeah, but they gave him his job back low-key. Like, he's still on the radio now. Like, if you go, you know, turn on High 97, same time. Like, he basically, he basically like, nothing happened. Like, yeah. even though he got caught out there twice, it's like, nothing happened. But he can't be publicized like that anymore. Nah, yeah, word. They can't put him at the forefront of anything. Exactly. Like, he, he can't be headlining events and stuff, but he still has his show and all that, like, 
you know what he does is mix and it's kind of crazy because i work i work down the street from hot 97 like maybe like three or four buildings away like same block damn near so like when i go into dunkin donuts like i'll bump into like dj enough arguing with his manager about appearances at a strip club or something like that <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, speaking from, I'm speaking from experience like i'm sitting there eating my little tuna sandwich and listening to them argue and it was it was interesting but um but yeah, yo, so I, I guess that when you talk about Mr. C, Mr. C got his job back. Like, both of these dudes, they losing their job. And, you know, for a lot of people, some people feel like, yo, you know, just because they did that doesn't mean they should be fired. You know, like a lot of people doing it, a lot of men are doing it. It's not a big deal. It's the oldest profession in the world. Like, don't fire them. You know what I mean? But how do you guys feel about them getting fired? Um, I think it's a little bit too far because... If you're a, if they're a celebrity, if they're really worth it that much, they would have covered it up. So I guess they, I guess Warren Sapp and Greg Anthony don't really matter much to whoever they used to work for. So they just let them go on on a whim. They were kind of replaceable with their networks, but exactly. It's like, yeah, because TMZ released that man. You could, you can, you can shut Harvey Levin up if you wanted to. <laughs> Yeah, and the worst part about it is he admitted to it to the police officers. Yeah, so like, it was like, yo, <laughs> yo, yeah, like you a celeb, like you could just straight up be like, yo, they was trying to get me to buy some because I'm Warren Sapp, yeah, or and the- I was trying to tell them to leave because I don't want none of that. But it's like unless the police walked in on you, like, you know what I mean? Like even you really so, don't have. <laughs> even so, it's like, dog, uh, call your lawyer up. What are you doing? Right? Yeah, like you don't have to say nothing, but you know, this is where I don't know. A little white lie wouldn't hurt. Warren Sapp did not listen to our uh, our talking to the police podcast. He definitely, he definitely yeah, did listen. He to definitely that. did. <laughs> nah, nah. So I mean, I, I think I think the only reason that they lose a the job is not because of the hooker thing. I think they lose it because like yo, it just makes them look. It makes the company look bad. It's like yo, do what you want, just don't make us look bad. Like that's my, my always my my reasoning behind anybody losing their job. It's like yo, you can do whatever you want. As long as it's in house and nobody knows, you know what I mean. And nobody, and if it's your first time, then it's cool. But if you do something and you embarrass somebody, make somebody look bad, you know, then they gotta let you go. Just because it's like, yo, well, reputation is everything, yo. NFL Network can't be like the network with the sleaze bag and analysis analysts, even though they do have, you know, Michael Irvin and Warren yeah, Sapp. They got a lot. They be giving. <laughs> All those NFL Aaron players. Sharp, come on. Aaron Sharper raping people. Like, come on, man. Wait, they had him as an analyst? Yeah, yo. No, they had Darren Sharper on? No, I didn't know that. That's yeah. crazy. I didn't know that either. Yo, he was a serial rapist, but that's all, That's another story, man. That's terrible. Bill Cosby. Um, oh, God. Come on. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. <laughs> that's, that, we, I'm surprised we haven't done a podcast on that. Uh, we don't need to. Everybody know about that. Some of them is lying, but yo, you, gotta understand, you guys got to see the the bigger game that's being played, man. It's these lawyers, man, that's setting it up, trying to get that hundred million dollar payoff. They get yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. You can make Again, money. they percentage. When I got my when I got my car wreck, dude try to dude try to pu- have a fraudulent claim, even though like nobody was hurt. You know what I'm saying? No ambulance was called and tried to say like, yo, he got hurt and type shit. Like, yeah. What? Yeah, dog. It's crazy. It's, it's a wild, yo, it's really the wild us. People be lying all day for the bread, man. I don't believe shit. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Man. <laughs> well, y'all know I'm a skeptic, so yeah, yeah. you just be making up shit, yo. That's crazy, yo. That's, I did not know that. You, so you don't, yeah, man. Then they were saying, oh, I I gotta fill up the article, but they were saying like in the '90s when Michael Jackson was having that whole child child shit. Or whatever. That's not true. They, they were, they were, they were sitting like, yo, we'll give you fifty thousand dollars if you, if, if you, you get guilty. Yeah, if you get your child to say like he, t- you know, he touched me, Michael Jackson touched me. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you gotta understand the lawyers win when you do shit like that. Lawyers win. Mm-hmm. So they just make up a whole bunch of shit and go through all these motions and they'll just waste your time and you keep, they'll keep getting bread and just find things that's not there. It's, yo, it's, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I understand the game, bro. Like, uh, I'm a my, lawyer. My... I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a mountain out of, uh, out of a molehill on everything. <laughs> yep. Hey, somebody need to teach these hookers that's going into these NFL players' rooms about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
They'll never learn. But yeah, <laughs> my, I guess I guess. But um, yo, what's the difference? I guess between what happens um with all these NFL players and what happens? I guess with the whole like prostitution industry here is that it's like illegal. But then you go to like people obviously have stories about the red light district in Amsterdam, which is mad famous because like you can actually pick them out from outside the 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 the, <laughs> the, stab, the establishment. They're like standing in a glass window, like dude, and you can just like pick which one you want and do your thing or whatever. And that's kind of, it's legal over there. You know what I mean, dude? And people are like, yo, they should legalize it here. I don't agree with it because I there's I got a multitude of reasons why, but like you know, what's the difference there? Like, see the thing is. We need to understand that it's no secret that whoring or prostitution, as they like to say it, it's been around forever. It's been around since the Renaissance. It's been around since the the Greek mythology days or whatever. Like it, Jesus was wrong. Yeah, exactly. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying. Like it, it, the only reason it's illegal is because of Westernization or America makes it that way. Like in a lot of places in, 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 on the earth, like if you go to Japan, you can see titties everywhere and it's, and it's nothing. Mm -hmm. But okay. if you do it here, all of a sudden it's a scandal. Like, oh my God, why are you showing this to my kids and yada, yada, yada. It's really not that serious. Like in certain countries, in certain um, second world or third world countries, there's no such thing as sexual harassment. Like, oh, it's, it's pretty much a lot to generate things with America to put restrictions upon people. So when you make it a restriction it makes it worse for people and you know when you tell people no they want to go do it mm -hmm. to me it's like weed you know <laughs> like when they found out there was ways they could like regulate it you know and and make it you know a represented like business in the government and stuff like that then that's when everything is cool like the problem with hookers is like yo like they're not it's not. Like, it's even worse than weed because weed you gotta grow it. You know what I mean? And people can figure out who's growing mad weed from like your electricity bills and suspicious like activity and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like you can get raided off the fact that like you never even sold a bag, but just because you have all these high powered lights and all this crazy electricity bill, your credit card purchases, they can figure out you're growing weed. Yeah. But like with hookers, it's just something you're born with. It's like you got a vagina. You know what I mean? So for you, it's like oh, I can go work for this this uh, agency that's going to take 65 percent of the money that i make or i can just you know put my, my my picture on back page and start making it like off the books and i think that's the biggest deal with the whole like prostitution thing granted trust me there's a whole like sex trafficking and like, oh yeah, human yeah. Trafficking and, and, and all and that. it gets it gets really nasty too because you gotta understand like there's a lot of it's a lot of young girls like 12 13 year old girls are getting yeah. so that's when it's just that's when it's yeah, crazy, that's, that's you know? when it's horrible. that's always your that's when you that and that's what happens when you get you get these old grown men getting getting being impressionable to these little young that's girls the thing, because have, some some grown men actually like fantasize about young children yeah. like that and it's disgusting yeah, it's like you know they, they you pimp little girls and you have 30 year old men messing with 15 year old girls like it's not sick. even 30 yeah. like in their 50s or even higher yeah it's sick. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I, I don't watch a lot of SVU. I watched a lot of SVU in my day, so I didn't seen I all types of that weird. That. Yo, man, you can watch that for days. But like the whole, yeah, because yeah, you do the, the whole criminal, the criminal aspect of all the like all the sex crimes and all that. It just makes it too difficult, I think, for for it to be like ran as a as a legitimate business because you still got all this disgusting stuff going on, like with the kidnapping and the the, the human trafficking and all of that and people just selling it on the side and not doing it through if there was some government legal type of way of getting it done then yeah like it's a, it's a cultural thing it's just be too difficult so i think that you know it makes sense to have it to have it um uh illegal but i think if there was a way that they could control that it would definitely be legal yeah, that's my, my suspicion if it was like a viable business that they could run without it being as messy as it is now it would be tons of people making money off of it. Of course, because, so. you know, we're, let's be truthful about it. There are women out there who don't mind selling their bodies. It's so called Instagram. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, if if there's a grown woman who willingly is like, yo, I'll, I'll sell you the cooch cooch for this how much, for how long, or whatever. That's her business. That's her body. She... You, you can't tell her what to do with her body. She's a grown woman. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, her, it's her pussy. She could do whatever she wants. She's a grown woman. But at the same time, it's like, 
if you have an influence on other women growing up, like young children, young little girls who aspire to be like that, that's when it becomes kind of bad. It's because like, is this really what I want my daughter to see or my, my niece or my little cousin or some somebody? Is this what I want her to do? But at the same time, when they grow up, you can't really tell them what to do. They have their own mind. So that's where you have both sides of the coin where you you're trying to figure it out like it's not it's not something that you can't just you know make a, a regular positive out of it you're gonna have both to deal with anyway yeah i think that would take our country in a whole different direction if that was going on like you, you're talking about dudes who's scared to have like a daughter now with you know the type of stuff that they put on tv and how we're like really hyper sexualized over sexualized now that would be a crazy world to live in. Like, we, we would be the old people like, man, back in my day, stuff was illegal. Yo, they're ruining the country. That would be us. Yeah. So we'd be the old people crying, complaining about that. Like, like the baby boomers who got the drink and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Like, back in my day, when I was young, it was called bootlegging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Now, that was, that was some mafia stuff, man, back in the day. <laughs> It's not uh, crazy yeah. though. Like certain things that were considered illegal now are just like just out in the open. Yeah. Yo, question, right? You just brought something up too. Like, remember? All right. So, boom. So, put it this way. I'm gonna ask you this. So, porn, right? Where does porn fall as far as like the line of like, yo, and like this Family Guy made a joke. It was like, all right, nah. Like this dude paid a girl, and the police busted in, and it was like, yo, you're arrested for soliciting a prostitute. He's like, nah, it's a porn. I had a camera set up. Like, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so, it was like, <laughs> so it was like, it was like, yeah, prostitution. It's illegal unless you videotape it. Then it's just porn. So they made a joke about it, and I'm just sitting there. I was like, "Whoa, you know," and, and that kind of made me think. So, like, where does porn fall with that? Like, I don't, I don't think it's the same. I like my whole reason of like regulations and all that stuff because you got to sell it. Mm -hmm. But still, like, what's the difference between somebody who was like ready to do it on the street versus somebody who does it in porn? And many of them actually do do escort stuff on the side too. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. most porn oh, yeah. things do hooker shit. Most they all of them strip, do they do everything. Yeah, yeah, they're like they're like strippers, but they also do porn and they do escort. Like that shit bugs me out too. And the whole escort industry just gets a, it gets a pass though. And if you peep that, like the whole the escort game is like the closest thing you can get to like legal prostitution in the U.S. But it gets a pass because it's just like oh well, you know they're clean with it, they run it well, like you know yeah, they and there, you know. and there's degree to it. Like you can have an escort where she will just go out on a date with you. You gotta pay her. Mm -hmm. little, yes, it's, it's an experience. Are you or like if you got like a banquet to go to, she'll go with you or some shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is so retarded. I would never in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yo, it's weird yeah. now. What's the what's the thing they got now? Sugar daddies for girls who like want their bills paid, and if you look good, you sign up for it. And then they got old dudes who are like 60, 70 years old who who like are mad, like oil rich. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they will like pay your your uh, your tuition. For you to come like spend weekends with them and all that, and they'll like, you know you take they take you out shopping, all that other stuff, man. The Sugar Daddy's website, they just did a story on the news about it like a wow. few days ago. That is so crazy. That only happens to females. If you see that, that only happens to females. <laughs> I'm kind of tight. Like I need some money, like, somebody right? I wish somebody would pay my tuition when I was in college. A, a grown ass woman would come up to me like, "Hey, you look good, young man. Let me pay your bills. Come hang out with me the weekend." <laughs> Yeah, I ain't gonna front. That is kind of cool, but <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, wouldn't that be so ill? Like, come on! I don't want to be an ass. I know it's not politically incorrect, but yo, I'm I'm thinking about that now. Like, if I was in school and some woman was just like, "Yo, just hang out with me. I'll pay all your tuition and all that." Like, cause I'm, I don't know, I, I, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know, yo. But that's 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 another big thing though. But like, the whole game is crazy. It's a, it's it's a it's a big game now. Like back in the day, it was just like, "Yo, get on the corner, sell it." Now it's like webcam chicks like yo how many of y'all met a chick in the club or something like that and then she turned out to be like a webcam girl or something like that like that's how she nah, made her I money never met a, a webcam oh, girl no, yo my man. boy introduced me to one son that's He's hilarious like, it's just a straight webcam chick yo she doesn't work regular hours she just gets on a computer and like gets and sets up her webcam and whatever like that oh, makes mad money oh her. i know a girl who does like foot fetish porn where she what? like she'll get a she'll set up a camera and she, yo, she makes map, yo, she whops off that. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> fetish? No? Yeah. Foot fetish porn. You know what I'm saying? You heard, what? like, remember when Rex Ryan got in trouble with some shit? But yeah, they, they have foot fetish porn. And, like, she'll, she does the shit. 
Mm -hmm. Yo, you know how just lotion that's your feet on camera. Oh my god. Lotion your feet on the camera and, and then have the chat window open and you know, put other stuff on your feet while people make requests and then you know what I mean you right. send people your, your Amazon wish list and get bread. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these dudes is just nerds jerking off on their computer, man. Gotta make better. No, it's, it's, it's a hustle for everything, bro. It's a hustle for all. <laughs> Pimp, C, Pimp C said it before he died. He was like, Pimpin' ain't dead, it just moved to the website. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. But mm -hmm. feet, though? Yo, webcam, son. No, I'm telling you, man, webcam. Is, bro. Dude, feet. One of the most ugliest parts of the human body. Yo, that's another thing that a lot of chicks who do porn do on the side, though. Like, they'll do the webcam stuff on the side. Like, it's, I, I peeped that. You're like, all these chicks who do porn, it's all like mad little passive yeah, they're income. Ultimate, yeah, they're shit on the side. hustlers, man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know that. They, they Yo, put up the front always. Yeah, Word. porn, fucking, stripping, selling pills, all that shit. <laughs> yep. Word. Everybody done been in a strip club and had a subtle. Oh, so you want to go to the back? Like, well, what's about to happen in the back? Like, oh, well, you, whatever you want, tell how much you got, how much you got. Like, yeah, everybody had that little weird conversation. Like, oh, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm safe. Right I'm safe, <laughs> like, you know? shorty. I'm good. She yeah. got like two cribs and shit. Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> how you get I, that? <laughs> I'll just teach you, you to shake these cheeks. That's about it. Nah, yo, I want. I, I wonder how much like when you go to like. The like you go to a cheap strip club and then you go to like a King of Diamonds and then you see like the type of dudes that go in there and the type of amount of money that people is throwing. Like you go to KODs and they're picking up the, the tip money after every dancer with like a what you call it, like a plastic like like pail that you would put your like school clothes in at the end of the year, your winter clothes in. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they was putting all the money in that and taking it to the back. They got like, trash oh, bags filled with ones. Yeah, like crazy, crazy amount of bread, and I and I think it was like um, CNN Money or something like that was talking about like the high paid strippers, how much money they're making versus like the everyday strippers, and they were like, yo, the strippers that are working at like the nice, nice spots and doing all this, you know, hustling stuff that we talking on the side, halfway hooking, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like them girls are doing like over like a hundred something grand a year, like easily. Off yeah, and just and, it's, off and, no money. and the taxing is is hard to trace. The tax is hard to trace. Yeah, that. Can't. Can't you know how much money you gotta make to get a hundred grand untaxed? That's like you gotta make two fifty, like a quarter mil, just to get a hundred grand untaxed. Yep, that's that crazy. Is. That's crazy. Right, and I just came from ATL a few weeks ago, and I just yeah. I, I seen it firsthand. Like you know how you see it on the videos where dudes are just throwing random money in the air. These dudes yeah. really did that. Are you in Magic City? No, I went to uh, Pinups. Oh, all right. And you know that that I think that's like the hottest one in ATL. And like there was this dude in there, he was just literally just flinging like a bunch of like stacks of dollars, and all these strippers came out of nowhere, just took off their clothes, and then for like two minutes, and then they all picked up the money and walked away. Yeah, <laughs> dope boys. Yeah, I'm like man. you're an idiot. You just yo just for two minutes. I've seen nothing. No like I don't get that. Man, I was in Miami and my my uh my homegirl's friend, he was like, Yo, I came into here when Cam Newton showed up to the strip club one day. He was like, Yo, you don't wanna be in a strip club <laughs> and a celebrity or anybody with mad bread is in there because he was like, Yo, you get no, no love. love. You basically just get to watch yep. the whole time as they all stand around and give these dudes dances like cause they not paying you no mind. Nope. Trying to get that bread. Yeah, 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 man, it's it's a it's a hustle, yo. It's a hustle, yo. Strip club, strip club, man. I, I you know, I, I try not to judge nobody based off what you do. I'm like, yo, you do what you do, like you live your life. I'm not gonna judge nobody, but it's just like, yo, that's a crazy game. And if you brought up the whole untaxed income thing right there. That's that's crazy, yo. Yeah, man. I'm I'm pretty sure soon enough, around the time, I'd say I I gave it about 15 to 20 years. It's gonna start to get legalized. Cause marijuana has gotten legalized. Come on. Like yeah, I think it's. I think they. I don't know if it's gonna be 100 percent legal, but I think with yeah, it's definitely gonna be way cities, though, Like, like, mm -hmm. uh, like California, like maybe parts of California, New York, Nevada, no. Texas. New York ain't gonna let that rock. Nah, nah, nah. New York don't play that. Nah, too many. Florida, maybe. Many Florida, definitely. I can see that. I can see that happening in Miami and Vegas first. Yeah. Or some parts of uh, L.A. I don't, I don't know, man. I think they homeless people. I can see it. I can see it in Texas. 
Yeah. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it happening in Texas because Texas is so big on everything about marketing and economics and money that they 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 can't afford to lose. And you know, Texas do it big. Oh, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and their women, their women are beautiful. I've seen Texas. Heard about women. that? Heard yeah. like University of Texas. Yeah. Texas women are yeah. te- a lot of Texas like Texas women are really beautiful, man. So never heard that. No. So uh, then again, you know, what I mean, I'm 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 late on the travel scene, man. I ain't get on a plane till 2011. Nah, so. It's never too late, man. <laughs> you on that plane small. I'm cut, man. man. I'm cut. <laughs> happily, happily cut, man. I'm good. <laughs> or me too. I'm happily cut. <laughs> so y'all. <laughs> I don't look dead at my girl I'm out. when I say it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you she know, right? <laughs> she, know I, she know I love her and shit like that. Alright, well, oh, oh man, uh, but, yeah, so I can't remember, but yeah, what you were saying was about that is like chick is gonna get mad more like loose and free with it, and like yo, you got, you just gotta look back, like that's how everything works. Like when we was kids, like you got caught smoking weed, it was like yo, you had to know how many grams you had, that it wasn't like uh, a jail sentence or something like that. You know what I mean? Now they just changed the law in New York City to where smoking. If you get caught with weed on you and it's less than an ounce, it's just an appearance ticket. Like, they don't even cuff you and send you to jail. Like, they just give you an appearance ticket to come to court. Like, it's crazy. And I think in D.C., then they just make it, like, recreational weed, like, legal or something like that out there, too? Yep. Yeah, and, like, you know, now, like, the sex game is going to get... It's going to get more and more... Like, yo, all I'm saying is we got to be smart about how we watching what our kids is doing, man, one day, yo, because that stuff is going to be so, like, open. All right? Like, you got to protect kids more now than you had to before because you know they best friend got a smartphone and <laughs> you just like yeah, it man, is what it is Scruff McGruff ain't around no more man so son we used to go to our boys crib to play like the video game system that we didn't own imagine your kid going to his friend's crib because you won't buy him a galaxy t- a galaxy cell phone and his friend got one so then he hook it up to the wi-fi and they basically doing what they want for hours on end like that shit is kind of kind of scary to me man yeah man i mean it's at the same time, there's really not much you could do about it. You can only go so far as to how you raise your kids, but society plays a role in them growing up too. So you gotta, you gotta let them yeah. go at a certain point. Yeah, I hope you did your best, man. Yeah. Let me let me not go, let me not go down that rabbit hole, man. I feel like we done <laughs> hammered yeah. this whole selling selling box point in today. So. <laughs> You probably got any other any other pieces to add about this man Warren Sapp, Greg Anthony? Good luck, but y'all both got fired already. So yeah, man, yeah. was it worth it, guys? <laughs> was it worth it, right? Uh, well, I don't think Warren so. Sapp, Warren Sapp, he could have he could have got away with it. He was a retard. He could. Yeah. <laughs> Why you yell like? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, like you yelling at a hooker in the yeah, hall? You like blowing up your spot? Like dog, you know you're not supposed to be doing this right now. <laughs> like it's not frowned upon. Like people just do it every day. Like you would have thought he was like yelling at his son for breaking a window or something. Like you know what I mean, like just yelling at a hooker in the hallway. Two of them. Whatever, yo. Yeah. It's a wrap. All right, man. Well, we gonna close this one out. Um, feel free to leave comments about your opinions. Uh, this whole Warren Sapp, Greg Anthony, or even like the sex trade in America. How this stuff's getting kind of. You know, it's changing. The game is changing, and what it used to be. Talk about the Super Bowl. Let us know how you felt about, you know, the Patriots Deflate Gate. We didn't talk about that. I feel like everybody's tired of hearing about that story, but you know, you can leave something about that too. So, yeah. you know, highlight us definitely, man. Yeah, hey, give give us a little uh, insight on Pete Carroll's explanation, quote unquote, or whatever. So, um, <laughs> yeah, um, shameless logic out here, man. All right, yo, this is finesse, man. I holler. Peace for thought. Alright y'all, peace. peace.